the king of heaven. The one who has not called on the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. The one who has power over all. The one who is our sufficiency. The one who sustains all but is sustained by none. Oh, Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for the grace to be in your presence tonight. Thank you for the grace to be counted among living souls. Jesus will say, be thy exalted in the name of Jesus. Abba Father, tonight, O oh Lord, we have come to you. Lord, we pray tonight, O oh Lord, that no one, whether on site or online, will live here with a plastic experience in the name of Jesus. The God Almighty who has power to raise men. Tonight, O oh Lord, everyone here, I decree tonight, they will be lifted in the name of Jesus. They begin to mount up as eagles in the name of Jesus. Tonight, O oh Lord, I pray, O oh Lord, that you speak to us in the name of Jesus. Thank you because you have answered. May your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Let the living soul in the house shout, Hallelujah! Eagles in the house shout, Hallelujah! If you know you have a father that is an eagle, and you know that you belong to him because it is like father, like son. Shout hallelujah. I'd like to appreciate my father in the Lord and my mother for the privilege to stand before mighty men and women tonight. Thank you for bringing us up. Thank you for obeying the call of the almighty. And I pray, O Lord, that grace to carry on the Almighty will bestow unto you in Jesus' name. I also appreciate the senior pastors and our leaders in the house. The Lord continue to renew you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we have a very vital subject before us tonight. And in the process, I've come to realize that in this world, there are different, there are three classes of people that exists in this world. The first class are called the garbage class. When we talk about people in this class, they exist, but their existence is meaningless. They are of no benefit to anyone in the world. This set of people, they are people without impact. And in the Bible, we are made known of a man called Methuselah. As old as Methuselah lived on it, the Bible recorded that Methuselah lived for 969. And the only thing the Bible could record about him was that he lived old and he died. Garbage class. Then the second class that we have in this world are those that belong to the class of the grasshopper. These people, they exist, but they are not living. They are quick to identify opportunities. They are quick to identify good things. But one thing about them is that they never possess it. The Bible talked about the men that were sent to Canaan to spy. Some of them brought a report that though the land was good, but they, they, in the land they were like grasshopper because giants possessed the land. Then they had that mentality and they brought that report that they can never possess the land. These are people that belong to the grasshopper class. And tonight, there's a third class that I employ everyone to belong to tonight. The people in this class, they are known as giants. They are known as mountain movers. They are known as shakers of this world. They are the ones that they create thing and it's established. They are the ones that carry, up, that carry power. They carry authority. They are the ones that when they get into a territory, they possess the territory. They are not just mere men. They are giants. And these people, they belong to the ego class. The ego class, they are made up of giants. The ego class, you have them as political giants. You have them as giants of industries. Then also you have them as spiritual giants. In the Old Testament, the Bible mentioned them gave names like Abraham, our father, mentioned Elijah, mentioned David, and so on. 
And in the New Testament, the Bible recorded them as giants. An example is Apostle Paul. So you got that he actually won many souls for Christ and he did exploits for Christ. And right here, glory to God. We have an example of, those, of that class in our midst tonight. Our father, our father, Daddy Adeboye, belongs to the giant class. He is not an ordinary man. In the Bible, the Bible classifies eagle into two. We have the superior eagle or the special eagle. The superior eagles, spiritually, they are giants. They are firebrand. When you look at the spiritual battery, it is fully charged. When they enter a territory, even demons bow. These are firebrand Christians. The second type of eagles that we have are the inferior eagles. That is the common Christian. Tonight, I will implore you that you try and move and not just be an ordinary Christian, but become a Christian that begins to rule for Christ, that begins to reign for Christ. Our text tonight, Exodus chapter 19, verse 1 to 4. Verse 4 says, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings. Tonight, there are eagles, and there is eagle. When we talk about eagles, they are the common ones. But talking about eagle, they are the extraordinary sets of people. In the Bible, the Bible mentioned eagle 12 times in the Bible. That means God has a covenant with an eagle. And it's mentioned in the Bible about eagles 23 times. But tonight, I wish someone will be here tonight that will desire, that will born to mount up as eagle tonight. So when we talk about eagle, there are so many features of an eagle. But I'll state some. An eagle is a unique bird. That is, it is rarely seen. I want you to say to yourself, I am unique. I am unique. The Bible talked about eagle as a bird that is rarely seen. That is, you don't see them among mere men. Their association is distinct. God called those people special people. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. It says, the Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people. Number two feature of an ego is that it flies higher than other birds. That is, when other birds are flying, what an eagle does is to soar. Do you know that an eagle, the flight height of an eagle, is between 30,000 to 4,000 feet? That is, it can ascend an altitude that no other bird can, can ascend. Tonight, well, I don't know the level you've been flying. But by the unction of the Holy Spirit, the Lord began to take you higher and you begin to swear like an eagle in the name of Jesus. Because it is written in John chapter 3 verse 31 that he that cometh from above is above only. That means your place is meant to be above. That means you are meant to be far above principalities and power and dominion. Number three thing about an eagle is that it swears along the direction of the wind. That is, no matter the challenges, no matter the obstacle, eagle face obstacles. Eagles face challenges. Challenges don't define them. Challenges don't make them look back. The challenges don't make them weary. There is someone here tonight. I don't know the, the, the challenges you might be facing. Oh, I don't know the power that has been proving themselves power, powerful over your life. Tonight, you overcome them in the name of Jesus. An eagle possesses unusual strength. Hallelujah. One thing about an eagle is that it weighs between 4, four to 6 kg. 
But one unique thing about it is that it carries animals that are higher than it. An eagle can carry a prey that is up to 20 kilograms. Tonight, I want to tell you that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You may think you are little, irrespective of your stature. You begin to do great things in the name of Jesus. An eagle cannot be eaten. Oh, who are they that are saying that we see your hand? Because you are an eagle, no power of hell will be able to surmount you in the name of Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17, Isaiah 54, verse 17, it says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. As from tonight, every weapon of the enemy against your life, against your family, against your destiny, the Lord destroy them tonight in the name of Jesus. An eagle is an animal that cannot be caught easily. The Bible says in Leviticus chapter 11 verse 13, it says it is an abomination to hit eagle. Therefore I decree tonight, every eaters of flesh and drinkers of blood, aside to eat your flesh, aside to drink your blood, as from today, they begin to eat their own flesh and they begin to drink their own blood in the name of Jesus. Now when the Bible says, when it is on eagle's wing what does it mean to be on eagle's wings as we all know that eagle signifies strength eagle signifies power eagle signifies renewal so when a man is on eagle's wing it means the almighty taking charge of your affair it means the almighty taking charge of all that pertains to you it means the Almighty carrying you with his hands. It means the Almighty lifting you above what you can imagine. In Exodus chapter 19 verse 4, it says, And you saw how what I have done to the Egyptians, and now I bear you in my wings. Tonight, every Egyptian set against your life. You begin to see their downfall in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Almighty, you begin to carry fire that the enemy cannot withstand in the name of Jesus. Now, what happens when a man is on a goose wing? Number one, vision becomes clearer. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. It says, Call unto me, and I will show you mighty things which you know not of. That is, when you are on the wing of an ego, you have clarity. You know how to do things. You begin to know what to do it, what to do. You begin, God begins to show you the steps you need to take in order to fulfill purpose. You begin to have clarity about your life. You begin to have clarity about your family. God begins to show you secret things that you need to know about yourself. That will make you swell like an eagle. Number two, eagles command speed. Hallelujah. Eagle is not an animal that is sluggish. When you talk about the speed of an eagle, an eagle swells at the speed of 135 miles per hour. That means its speed is much less. As from today, there is someone here tonight. The Lord begins to bear you on his wings and give you speed that is incomparable in the name of Jesus. In 1st chapter 18 verse 44 to 46, we learn how Elijah had run the asses of Ahab. When you mount upon the wings of an eagle, the Lord grants you speed to overtake. The Lord grant you speed to overrule. The Lord grant you speed to possess. I pray that will be your portion tonight in the name of Jesus. Number three, the strength of an eagle is renewed. An eagle can travel as far as 224 miles a day without getting tired. 
I don't know where you have been battered tonight. I don't know where you've been weary tonight. I don't know where you've been disappointed tonight. I don't know the pain you carry here tonight. Tonight, the Lord take them away and renew your heart in the name of Jesus. Number four is longevity. Eagles don't just die anyhow. Eagles live long. The lifespan of an eagle is 120 years because of the kind of food they eat. Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 16. It says, Thy word were found and I did eat them. I don't know what you've been eating, but tonight begin to feed on the word of the Lord. The Bible says in Psalm 91 verse 6, Psalm 91 verse 6, it says with long life, Will I satisfy you and show you his salvation? As from today, every covenant of death, every appointment with death against your life is overruled in the name of Jesus. You shall not die, but you shall live. Why must you live long? Because you have prophecy upon your head that is yet to manifest. The Lord bestow upon you long life to fulfill purpose on earth in the name of Jesus. Now, how can a man mount on eagle's wings? The first thing is genuine repentance and total submission to Christ. When a life is without Christ, such a life begins to experience crisis. When a man is without Christ, no matter your pursuit in life, it becomes difficult. When a man is without Christ, the man begins to live a meaningless life. I urge you tonight, brethren, if you are alive, if you are still in the other world, I implore you tonight that you come out and be separated unto the living God. With genuine repentance in your hearts, the Lord will begin to show you mercy and raise you up out of the dust and set you among princes. Acts chapter 26 verse 20 says, they, that they should repent and turn to God. Do works meet for repentance. How can a man mount on eagle's wings? It's humanity. If you are too big for God to carry you, eagle's wing experience becomes difficult. If you are too big for the Lord to carry you, that means the rules of this world will take you away. You have prayed, you have done so many things, but it seems you are still at that position. You need to be, to, to be humble. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, it says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. How can a man mount on eagle's wing? It is through consecration. Oh, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. It says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself as a living sacrifice, only and acceptable. When a man begins to live a consecrated life, when a man begins to die to flesh, when a man begins to allow only the way of the Lord to reflect in his life, then the Lord is set to lift that man up. Psalm 24, verse, two to, verse 3 to 4. Psalm 24, verse 3 to 4. It says, Who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? If you are not consecrated, you cannot see God. If you are not consecrated unto him, the mountain top experience, the ogre's weak experience is enough for you. Be consecrated. Number four, align with your maker. Amos chapter 3 verse 3. Amos chapter 3 verse 3 says, God can, uh, can two agree, can two be to accept they agree. You need can two work to that accept they be agreeing. You need to agree with your maker. When you agree with the Almighty in the place of prayer, when you agree with God Almighty in fellowship, it begins to order your step. It begins to show you. It begins to acquaint you. With the culture of heaven. Number five is that you wait on him and tarry in his presence. Not just waiting, the Bible says, 
Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strengths. Do not leave the place of waiting. Do not leave the place of tiring. Because there is a day of appointment. I pray for someone here tonight. The day the Almighty will visit you. May you not be found wanting in the name of Jesus. Tarry. Keep waiting. In tarrying, you pray. Luke chapter 18 verse 1 says, Man ought always to pray and not to faint. Keep praying. When it seems there's no result, you keep praying. Do not be discouraged. And I pray the Lord, who is pleasures in mercy, we begin to lift you in the name of Jesus. Beloved, the place to desire as a believer is to be on eagle's wing. It is a realm of ease. You experience the easy double when you are on the eagle's wing. When you are on the eagle's wing, this is when the Lord who faints not will begin to carry you. Super eagles of Nigeria has failed us. People that we think that will lift us up have disappointed us. But is there is someone who never fails. There is someone who has the power to raise the poor out of the dust and raise the needy from the dunghill and set him up among princes. I pray tonight the Lord God Almighty will change your position in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I don't know if you belong to the garbage class. I don't know if you belong to the grass of Passai. The Almighty God, in His infinite mercy, begin to lift you up on these wings in the name of Jesus. The Lord will ask power to get wealth. Maybe your finances are shaking. Maybe insecurity has become a problem to you. Oh, let the Lord, who can carry a man, let the Lord, who can do whatever pleases him to a man, let him carry you tonight. And I pray the Lord will lift you up in the name of Jesus. Right now, I want us to rise to our feet. I want us to rise to our feet tonight. I begin to ask for mercy. Say, oh Lord, my strength has failed me. Oh Lord, my wisdom has failed me. But you, the Lord, never fail. Please carry me. Oh, you never fail. Please carry me. Oh, you never fail. Please carry me.